Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Been busy a lot lately doing all the Hannibal Lecter films, including the last one, Red Dragon, which was last week, of course. But however, I still haven't seen Hannibal Rising yet, even though I did saw it before. But I'm going to get right to it um, once I try to find a copy, because I know there are two versions of it. Yeah, the theatrical and the extended version. So who knows? And I wouldn't mind checking out the extended version because I never saw that one. I only saw the theatrical one, and I remember not liking that film as much. But still, I, I, I like to review it anyway, someday. But for right now, I'm going to review a movie that I just saw a few weeks ago during my birthday. It's sad to say I saw it at the Universal City Walk, which made me miss the middle part of the film for like over 10 minutes. Thanks to those feeder employees. Yeah, they definitely ruined my experience. So anyway, I did finally got to see the film Avengers Age of Ultron, which is a follow-up to the 2012 film Marvel's The Avengers, or also known as The Avengers Assemble. Yeah, which actually has all the superheroes from the Marvel comics working together, such as Iron Man, the Hulk, Four, Hawkeye, Captain America, and Black Widow. So yes, they all work together as a team to stop all the bad guys from taking over the whole world. And that was a good idea for a film like that because it works well as a crossover. And I was so excited when I first saw that movie. And I remember watching it with my family. And it, we were just pumped up with excitement and it's just you just can't go wrong with it yeah. and once again I keep seeing both of these films in 3D which I prefer seeing it in 2D instead I mean don't get me wrong I love 3D when it comes to other films but that's actually done right but not the Avengers or any of the other uh, superhero movies so that's for sure because I know I did saw Captain America in 3D once. And that was the first The Avenger that I saw. It was okay, the 3D, but it, it just looked better in 2D. It stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Don Cheadle, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen, yeah, both of which were in the film Godzilla last year. So this time they got to play Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Paul Bendy, Kobe Smulders, Anthony Mackie, Haley Adwell, Aris Elba, Selen Skarsgård, Annie Circus from the Lord of the Rings movies, Samuel Jackson, and James Spader, who now plays Ultron, the villain. Yeah, which this is also, I believe, the third time that James Spader had teamed up with a film with Robert Downey Jr. since Tough Turf back in 1984. And later, Less Than Zero. Yep, it's based on The Avengers by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And it's written and directed by Josh Wheaton, you know, best known for writing and directing shows such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, and many movies including the Avengers so let's get right to it the movie began Sid and Sokovia the Avengers which includes Tony Stark Steve Rogers Four, Bruce Banner Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton yeah of course Iron Man Captain America you know, the Hulk Black Widow and Hawkeye they actually raided a Hydra outpost that's led by Baron Wolfgang von Structor, whose experiments was using on humans by grabbing the scepter, the blue scepter that Thor's brother Loki had held. And this time, he had his two experiments, which turned out to be twins. One is Quicksilver, and the other one is Scarlet Witch. Yeah, both real names are Pedro and Wanda Maximoff yeah 
Quicksilver, of course, has indeed the superhuman speed where he just races all the way around, which I know we, we had saw the character previously in X-Men Days of the Future Past, which was played by a different actor. And um, Scarlet Witch, of course, can manipulate minds and project energy. Yeah, that means that she can actually control a lot of people's minds and actually uh, create a lot of hallucinations that go straight to their heads. And that's when you see all their visions um, all the way in. And, and yes, in a very creepy way. So anyway, Stark winds up retrieving Loki's scepter, which suddenly discovers the artificial intelligence by using the scepter's gem. So that's where both you know, Stark and Banner has been experiencing. They actually secretly use it to complete Stark's Ultron Global Defense Program, which unexpectedly sends Ultron to believing he must save Earth by eliminating Stark's artificial intelligence named Jarvis. So they wind up attacking the Avengers at their headquarters and they start escaping the scepter that Ultron was using to resources sources and structures Lokovia. So based on the Maximoffs by holding Stark responsible for the parents' death by his weapons. So together they're actually they actually go after an arms dealer named Ulysses Claus, which in an African shiplar to obtain Bardenanium, which was the Avengers had pursued and try to you know stop them and everything. Until Wanda wanted to subdue the heroes by using all these haunting visions as we speak. Because they they somehow uh, vision everything that just happened in the past. Which suddenly turns into a whole um, evil thought. It, makes, it also causes the Hulk to, to a huge rampage until Stark stops him with his anti-Hulk armor. That's when the whole thing starts to collapse between the Avengers themselves. All of this had begun to happen once they went straight to Barton's safe house for the, the parts to consult with Dr. Eric Selvig on the meaning of the apocalyptic future that they saw on each and every one of their hallucinations. So this is sort of like a take on Jacob's Ladder in that sort of way when it comes to hallucinations and all this other crazy stuff that's happening to them and they're actually feeling it. Yeah, I, I guess it had that comparison with it, so I might as well. Nick Fury finally arrives and encourages the team to form a plan to stop Ultron from harming everybody's way. So they actually went to Sequo, Korea, to actually to find Dr. Helen Cho to actually use this synthetic tissue technology to, to use together with Barbonarium, with the Sector's Gem, to actually to create a perfect new body. So they'll be able to upload himself into the body, so that way Wanda can able to read his mind, discover his plan for human extinction. While the Maximoffs have one of turning on Ultron, Rogers, Romanov, and Barton to find Ultron and retrieve the synthetic body. But of course, Ultron wants up capturing Black Riddle. So once again, together they wind up uh, fighting against when when they try to use. Um, Jarvis, you know, who's still operating by hiding inside Ultron, inside the internet, so they they actually created it into a synthetic body. So anyway, Four returns to help activate the body by explaining on the gym on the brow. So I had to take one of six Affinity Stones, so they they become more powerful to eject its decisions by using the vision and the Mavinovs to copy the Avengers to Slokovia. So once Ultron wants up using the remaining Barbarianium to build a machine to cause this uh, the large part of the capital city, you know, collapsing into it to a global extension, it's up to them to actually stop Ultron and all the rest of them to actually uh, be able to um, construct this uh, madness that's going on. Well, and that was indeed one of the biggest 
challenge that they have to take for this movie because it's going to start a new beginning and a new revolution of the Avengers because this time they're trying their best to actually save everybody from over there but it's actually going to take a lot harder for for the whole thing to stop because it seems like Ultron had took over everything that he had to challenge by using all these robots that Tony Stark actually had you know, he created those robots but Ultron took over them so now they all got created in an evil way yeah so all of them of course are Ultrons so that's how scary it turns out to be in order for them to stop him yeah and it was really strong and and boy they really got into that it was it was really something but nevertheless I, I enjoy that concept I mean yes they wanted to go for a dark uh, serious tone that they went into it plus it had tons of action that I never thought I would see even though the Avengers did have a lot of great action in that scene uh, when they went to fight in New York by all of Loki's army but this one had plenty of action and I couldn't believe it <laughs> and I loved that because that's what they should have there was that one scene that I really enjoyed that was so hilarious. It was when everybody was trying to grab Thor's hammer <laughs> while they were inside uh, having a party at Stark's headquarters, which used to be, of course, but it was part of the Avengers headquarters. <laughs> I thought that was fun. And, but I'll give you this the movie did have its flaws, too. For one thing, I didn't like the idea where they started throwing that this whole uh, <laughs> watch your language bit that they put into it. Yeah, because I remember at the beginning of the movie, uh, Tony Stark, you know, as Iron Man, actually said the word shit, and they and they are just telling him, "Watch your language." Oh, I mean, come on. It was funny for maybe a few minutes. Having to say this many times totally destroyed it completely. It, it got old really fast. I think that was a stupid joke. Even a five-year-old can write that. I mean, come on, man. Seriously. It's a PG-13 movie. It's not a kid's film. It's not meant to be. But on the other hand, I know kids will enjoy it anyway. <laughs> I mean, even if they had put some languages in it. So what? I mean, come on, man. I mean, I'm 30 years old. I can handle that. Well, also, I, I have to admit, though, while Aaron Taylor Johnson did do a good job playing Quicksilver, I kind of preferred the original actor who was in the X-Men Days of the Future Past who played uh, Quicksilver. I, I kind of prefer that actor better because I thought it actually worked. You know, I you know he had a personality that that I can really deal with, and at least you know how how this was going. But that that's in my opinion. I mean, I love Aaron Taylor Johnson, you know, from Kick Ass, you know, ever since, and he's a great actor. But geez, I I think they should have picked the same actor. From X Men: Days of Future Past, in my opinion. But I guess if they had to pick him anyway, then it, you know, with Elizabeth Olsen along, it, t it does take you back to the fact that they were both in Godzilla together. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. But I would say this though: I thought James Spader did a great job, an awesome job actually, doing the voice of Ultron. Yeah. So at least it gives him a chance to actually play a villain. And it's cool because he actually did play the villain in several films before. In fact, he even played a villain in the movie Wolf with Jack Nicholson. I thought that was cool and very clever. So, yeah. Um, everybody was great in the film. You know, Robert Downey Jr. as usual, playing Tony Stark as Iron Man. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo playing Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Yeah, which, I, another thing I, I would say this though. I wish they didn't treat the Hulk in, in that sort of way. 
See, that's that's where I think we're getting to that different connection here. Was when now it almost has a spirit where we saw. Oh boy. <laughs> the fact that he's actually working together with Black Widow. Yeah, it's like it seemed more like a damsel in distress in that sort of way, and it, it just kind of bothered me a little bit, too. But otherwise, I think it's okay. Because who knows? I, I thought it'd be better if they just work as a team. It doesn't matter if. If, if they're falling in love with each other or not. Okay, uh, I'm going to get to that. But yeah, I mean, it's... Still, I, you know, it had a lot of great action here, nevertheless. And I also enjoy um, Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. I thought she was very strong. And she can actually try to manipulate a lot of people's uh, minds. So you get to see a lot of hallucinations that you saw, and she definitely had the power to do so. <laughs> I know they didn't like them at first because of what they did, but but you know what's going to happen next once they work together as a team, so they can stop Ultron from coming, and they did. It was hard, but they had to do it. So yeah. But of course, it had to be part of the Infinity War that they were going to follow. But yep, they're going to have, of course, a two-part uh, movie that's going to come out later in 2018 and 19. Yeah, which is becoming a trend nowadays. Because they're going to put uh, a two-part sequel called Infinity War that they're actually planning on. So I think it's going to be one of the biggest ones yet to come. And who knows how they're going to try to see if they can save the entire universe. So who knows how this is going to turn out. So <laughs> as long as they work together as a team so they can stop all this madness. But nevertheless, it was exciting, enjoyable, very dark, serious, and what do you know? It was a whole lot of fun. And I really loved the film. It's definitely right up there with the Avengers, as well as all the other ones that follow before before the Avengers, of course. All the other superhero films that we all know and love. I wouldn't say it's better than the Avengers, so with that aside, that I love the idea. I love the whole concept of all this. I like how they're trying to take a whole different approach to the sequel, and it worked. The movie had its flaws, but still. It's definitely the best superhero film we got so far this year. And hopefully there will be even more as it follows. So, <laughs> so let's hope for that. That's the film, The Avengers Age of Ultron. And I give that film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.